A Used Car Guide Chapter 1 Buy a Used Car Buying a Used Car 1 As far as depreciation values go, the best deals are on cars about three years old bought from a private sale by some guy or girl who put an ad online or in the newspaper and just wants to get rid of it because they got a shiny new one, they lost their job or something like that. Bring cash, get it checked out by a mechanic then haggle him down several hundred to get rid of his headache. For information about the blue book value of a used car, see the NADA official used car guide, nada.com, 800-544. 6232. Offer a few hundred below this price. You can buy a used car at a car lot, through an ad in the paper and by looking up car rental and leasing agencies in the phone book and asking whether they have any cars for sale. Check out the local car junkyards and ask if they've got some working models going for cheap. Don't be fooled by the age of the car. Technology hasn't changed all that much, it's the car that counts. Check out police departments and ask about their surplus vehicles or when they sell their seized vehicles. As for private sales, always get the proper paperwork when buying the car. Check the vehicle identification number slash VIN on the paper with the number on the vehicle, usually mounted on the dash near the windshield of the driver's side. Some used car dealers that can't sell their lemons give them to private dealers on consignment who pose as private owners pretending to be selling their grandmother's car or something like that. People still turn the miles back on the odometer so take a look to see if it's out of place like the number suspended halfway between the lines. Beware of buying a used car at a lot without some sort of written warranty even if for 30 days. Check with the Better Business Bureau or the State Consumer Protection Agency about the used car dealer's past record of complaints. Ask specifically about a warranty and get it in writing before you buy. If it's sold as is, you could become a sucker just like millions before you. Some states have laws giving extra protection to used car buyers. Contact your state or local consumer protection office to find out what rights you might have. Generally, Private sellers have less responsibility than dealers for defects or other problems. Check with your state's motor vehicle department on what you will need to register a vehicle. Make sure the seller isn't a dealer posing as an individual. That might mean the dealer is trying to evade the law and might be an indicator of problems with the car. Look at the title and registration. Make sure the seller is the registered owner of the vehicle. Ask the seller detailed questions about the car. Have the car inspected by your mechanic before you agree to buy it. The market is always saturated with used cars. The leasing market has brought even more cars into the scene. You can get a good deal with a warranty on a relatively new used car transferred from the original owner. The buyer's guide suggests you ask the dealer whether you may have the vehicle inspected by your own mechanic. Some dealers will let you take the car off the lot to get an independent inspection. Others may have reasons such as insurance restrictions, for denying this request. In such a case, the dealer may permit you to bring an independent mechanic to the used car on the lot. A dealer who refuses to allow any independent inspection may be telling you something about the condition of the car. A good-looking car or a car that comes with a warranty does not necessarily run well. An independent inspection lets you find out about the mechanical condition of the vehicle before you buy it. Although an inspection fee by a mechanic may seem high, when you compare it to the price of the car, it can be worth the cost especially if he uncovers a major lemon. Many states require that dealers but not individuals, ensure that their vehicles will pass state inspection or carry a minimum warranty before they offer them for sale. Ask your state's attorney general's office or a local consumer protection office about the requirements on individuals and on dealers in your state. Check the complaint records of car dealers with your state or local consumer protection agency or the Better Business Bureau, bbb.org. Call the auto safety hotline at 800-424-9393, nhtsa.gov, to get recall information on a car. Authorized dealers of that make of vehicle must do recall work for free no matter how old the car is. Shop during daylight hours so that you can thoroughly inspect the car and take a test drive. Don't forget to check all the lights, air conditioner, heater, and other parts of the electrical system. Ask questions about the previous ownership and mechanical history of the car. 
contact the former owner to find out if the car was in an accident or had any other problems. Check with your local department of motor vehicles to find out what you need in order to register a car. Ask the previous owner or the manufacturer for a copy of the original manufacturer's warranty. It still might be in effect and transferable to you. Car rental companies sell their used car sometimes. Call a few up and ask about their procedure for selling their used rentals. Don't sign anything that you don't understand. Read all documents carefully. Negotiate the changes you want and get them written into the contract. If buying from a private person, all bets are off. You buy as is so check it out thoroughly. Don't listen to any oral promises from anyone unless you get it in writing. Dealers with leased cars often sell them after they get them back. Sometimes they fix them up and offer them as pre-certified vehicles with a warranty. Call your local leasers and ask about them. Always haggle. Offer 15% less than the asking price. Never pay more than 90% of the price. Ask questions about the previous ownership and mechanical history of the car. Contact the former owner to find out if the car was in an accident or had any other problems. Ask the previous owner or the manufacturer for a copy of the original manufacturer's warranty. It still might be in effect and transferable to you. Read all documents carefully. Negotiate the changes you want and get them written into the contract. If something goes wrong, first try to resolve the problem with the salesperson or, if necessary, speak with the owner of the dealership. Many problems can be resolved at this level, however, if you believe that you are entitled to service but the dealer disagrees, you can take other steps. If your warranty is backed by a car manufacturer and you have a dispute about either service or coverage, contact the local manufacturer's zone representative. If you cannot get satisfaction from the dealer or from a manufacturer's zone representative, contact the Better Business Bureau, State Consumer Protection Agency or the Office of the Attorney General. Many states also have county and city offices that intervene or mediate on behalf of individual consumers to resolve complaints. Mediation slash arbitration works much the same way as with new cars. If none of these steps is successful, you can consider going to small claims court and slash or threatening the dealer with bad publicity in the media. If you know how to drive a motorcycle, consider buying one for local transportation especially if you live down south. Buying a used car too. Don't trust anyone about a used car regardless of how smooth they are. Pay a mechanic or a friend to check the car out before you buy. Go to carfax.com or autocheck.com, pay a fee to get a history of the car through its vehicle identification number, VIN. The car should not veer to one side if you take your hands off the wheel. There should not be funny noises. It should drive smoothly. Check all lights. Check the horn. Look under the car for fresh leaks. Some AAA motor clubs, AAA.com, offer inspection services for a modest fee. The major areas to check out are Engine Brakes Transmission Electrical System Airbags Engine Cooling System Frame and Suspension Car books are at number 629 at the library. Manufacturer's certified pre-owned guarantees would be your safest bet. Buy a used car from a dealership offering these guarantees. Call local car rental companies and ask if and when they sell off their cars. Pick a car you can afford. Make as large a down payment as you can afford and plan to repay the loan as soon as possible. Don't be afraid to negotiate. Some used car dealers offer warranties. Read your sales agreement before signing it. Make sure that any oral promises made by the salesperson regarding special services or adjustments are included in the contract. New cars depreciate quickly. Buy a used car. Pay cash if possible. Also, if you go to buy a car out of an ad somewhere beware that the seller is not setting you up for a robbery. Foreign cars cost more to fix than American cars. The days of fix-it-yourself have been severely hampered by computerization of cars. Chances are you'll have to pay mechanics to fix your used car. 
Buying a used car from a car dealer is usually more expensive than buying one from a private ad unless it's an old piece of junk the dealer wants to get rid of. You can get some deals on what the dealer sees as junk taking up space in his lot. One time when I went to buy a used car, I checked the lots out in the city then went to the outskirts of the city. The further away you go from the city, the cheaper the cars. A private sale of a car is like real estate. Find someone desperate to sell. Offer 20% less than the going price. Bring a friend. If you have cash, do the deal in a public place like the parking lot of an open store. Be ready to walk away. That's a good bargaining tool. Before you buy, take the vehicle identification number slash VIN off the corner right of the dash near the windshield or off the driver's door, check it through carfax.com for accidents but remember that car sellers are slick. They know it could take months before a car makes it on Carfax that has been in an accident so they'll fix it fast then sell it. Take the car to a mechanic. He'll check for structural damage. If you buy a stolen car thinking it's legitimate, the cops will take it if they find out. Before you buy, call the local cops, tell them you're buying a car, ask them to run the van for stolen vehicles. If you buy a used car with the plan of selling it later, your best bet is a foreign car. I buy a used car with the plan of driving it until death. Do two things. 1. Research the model of the car you are buying to see its reputation, Edmunds.com, LemonadeCars.com. 2. Before you buy, get a mechanic to inspect it. Ask the following questions. Why are you selling the car? How long have you owned it? Does it need any repairs? Is there any rust on the car? Take the car out on the highway and try to check on speed, turns, brakes, going up a hill, smooth handling, changing gears, etc. Try to drive the car under many different conditions such as on hills, highways, and in stop and go traffic. You also may want to ask the dealer or owner whether the car has ever been in an accident. Find out as much as you can about the car's prior history and maintenance record. Bring a mechanic or someone knowledgeable about cars if you can. The first rule in buying a used car is never go at night. Wait until daytime where you can see the car for what it really is. Wear old clothes that you don't mind getting a little dirty. First look over the body for poor panel alignments and slightly mismatched paint as clues to a possible accident. Open the door, look into the side to see if the paint there is different from the outside which would mean that it had been painted. Open and close all doors, windows, trunk, and the hood to check on smoothness. If they're off, it could be from a bent frame as the result of an accident. Open the door locks from both the inside and outside with the key. Check the weather seal moldings around the windows to see if they're brittle or cracked. Look for extensive signs of rusting particularly around the bottom of doors and underneath the fender. Bubbles or blisters under the paint indicate that the car is rusting from the inside out. Look under the mats of the front and in the trunk for signs of rusting. Check to see if the car comes with a working jack and spare tire. Tap the panels with just your finger. Solid steel will have a metallic ring while rusted areas and those filled with body fill will sound dull. Uneven wear on the tires could indicate a poor alignment. Check the oil change stickers on the inside of the door jam or under the hood. Is it recent or is there even one there? Firmly grab the top of each front wheel with both hands and try to shake it back and forth. If it moves, it could mean a poor suspension or bearings. Check the inside of the wheels for brake fluid seepage and check the shock absorbers for leakage. Push down hard on each corner of the car then let go. If it bounces more than once or twice, it means that the shock absorbers are bad. Look under the car and on the ground for leaks from the oil pan, transmission casing, or the shock absorbers. With car running, follow your gaze of the exhaust system from the manifold to the tip for the tailpipe looking for leaks and sign of patching. Look over the frame for signs of an accident by looking for cracks, signs of welding and to see if it's bent. Look for extensive signs of rust spraying to cover up rust. Look inside the car under the seat covers for general cleanliness and signs of use. Check the horn, windshield wipers, turn signals, four-way flashers, heat and air vents, headlights, brake lights, gauges, etc. 
press down on the brake pedal and hold it for half a minute. If it goes all the way down, it means that there's a leak in the hydraulic system. If the owner doesn't allow a test drive, reject the car. See how the car starts and how it idles. Run the engine in neutral and have someone look at the exhaust fumes. Blue smoke indicates the need for a ring job, that the engine is in bad shape. Black smoke indicates a dirty carburetor which has to be cleaned. Drive slowly in a straight line in a parking lot and have a friend look from both the front and back to see if the tires are wobbling in any way. To test the alignment, drive through a puddle or spray some water down then look at the tire tracks to see if the front and back are perfectly aligned on top of one another. Stop at a hill and check on the parking brake to see if it holds. Let the car sit idling for a few minutes to see if it overheats while you check underneath for leaks and look under the hood at the belts, hoses and battery for cracks and leaks. The owner might feel intimidated if you do all this but it's better than being sorry later. If you like what you see, ask the owner to let you take it to a mechanic or a computer diagnostic place at your expense for a closer look. Ask for a written diagnostic report. You can use the diagnostic report as a bargaining chip and possibly get a copy of used car blue book of values to haggle over the price. Always offer a few hundred less than the asking price. When you buy your car, get it licensed as soon as possible to avoid getting pulled over by the police. Best bet in buying a used car is about 3 years old, driven between 10 to 15,000 miles per year. Financing for a used car is exactly like that of new cars. The final alternative is to get by without a car. You can buy a small used motorcycle and that will get you by. Ask your local motorcycle shops about a small, used motorbike. Check a car's past history slash vehicle history. If you're concerned that the car you want to buy might have been in an auto wreck or previously ridden off in a flood, simply get the vehicle identification number from near the windshield on the driver's side, go to your department of motor vehicles and ask for a title history. It'll cost about $10 to $15. There are sites on the internet that offer this service too like carfax.com, 888-422-7329. You could get scammed by unknowingly buying what is called a rebuilt car which means the car was in an accident then rebuilt. The reason this is bad is because after bad accidents, many cars have structural damage. They're unsafe for driving. A recent scam that auto thieves do is that they might get the paperwork for a late model car that was in an accident or something like that from a junk dealer then they'll go out and steal an exact duplicate of the car and sell it through a private sale on the side of the road. If you inadvertently buy a stolen, used car and the police find out, you lose the car and the money. Beware, this is more widespread than you might think. You can trust a used car seller more if you go to his home rather than if you see one of these cars advertised with a sign on it in a parking lot somewhere or you meet the proposed seller in a public place rather than at his home. Somebody steals a car and replaces the van on a few areas of the car but the van is usually on about 12 different spots on the car. If you buy a stolen car without knowing it's stolen and the law catches up to it at some point in time, you lose the car. If you bought it from a used car dealer you can sue him to get your money back. This is why you should do a VIN report on a used car you plan to buy. Checklist of items to look for before you test drive. Rust, holes, gunk in tailpipe. Mismatches in paint, may indicate a past accident. Tires in poor condition uneven tread wear. Door locks work without sticking. All headlights and other lights work. Upholstery not sagging. Suspension doesn't sag. Checklist of things to watch for on the road. Clutch doesn't slip or make any noise. Exhaust pumping out black or blue smoke. Emergency brake holds on hill. Make sure the car doesn't pull to one side, i.e., that the wheels are properly aligned. Make sure steering doesn't wander or make noises. Accelerate on a hill to determine engine strength. Checklist for the mechanical test. Engine system, compression, spark plug reading, fuel pump, ignition, oil condition. Electrical system, wiring, alternator, regulator, air conditioner. Brakes, lining, pads, drums. Drive line, transmission. Universal joints. 
suspension, shocks, springs, ball joints, wheel balance. Frame and body, check for rust and evidence of structural damage. All headlights and other lights work. Why Carfax is not enough? Carfax.com gets information about car accidents from the thousands of local police forces in North America. Sometimes it takes two years for a car that was in an accident to be registered there. By that time, the car is fixed and sold. Get a car checked by a mechanic over and above the Carfax report. cbc.ca slash marketplace Carfax.com, 888-422-7329, run the van for cars past history. Carprov.com Chapter 2 Used Car Issues Used Car Warranties If you go to a dealer for a used car, look for a buyer's guide sticker on the window of each car. The buyer's guide, required by the Federal Trade Commission's Used Car Rule, FTC.gov, gives you important information and suggestions to consider. It gives information on warranties if any are offered and provides other information. In most states, used cars may be sold as is. If the as-is box is checked off on the buyer's guide, you have no warranty. If the warranty box is checked off on the buyer's guide, ask for a copy of the warranty and review it before you agree to buy the car. Private sellers generally are not covered by the used car rule and therefore, do not have to use the buyer's guide. They usually are not covered by the implied warranties of state law so, a private sale probably will be on an as-is basis unless your contract with the seller specifically provides otherwise. If you have a written contract, the seller must live up to the promises stated in the contract. The buyer's guide tells you whether the vehicle comes with a warranty and, if so, what specific protection the dealer will provide. Whether the vehicle comes with no warranty, as is, or with implied warranties only. That you should ask to have the car inspected by an independent mechanic before you buy. That you should get all promises in writing and what some of the major problems are that may occur in any car. The used car rule requires dealers to post the buyer's guide on all used vehicles, including automobiles, light-duty vans, and light-duty trucks. Demonstrator cars also must have buyer's guides but buyer's guides do not have to be posted on motorcycles and most recreational vehicles slash RVs. Individuals selling fewer than six cars a year are not required to post buyer's guides. Whenever you purchase a used car from a dealer, you should receive the original or an identical copy of the buyer's guide that appeared in the window of the vehicle you bought. The buyer's guide must reflect any changes in warranty coverage that you may have negotiated with the dealer. It also becomes a part of your sales contract and overrides any contrary provisions that may be in that contract. About one half of all used cars sold by dealers come as is which means there is no express or implied warranty. If you buy a car as is and have problems with it, you must pay for any repairs yourself. When the dealer offers a vehicle for sale as is, the box next to the as is, no warranty disclosure on the buyer's guide will be checked. If this box is checked but the dealer makes oral promises to repair the vehicle, have the dealer put those promises in writing on the buyer's guide. Some states, Connecticut, Kansas, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Mississippi, New York, Rhode Island, Vermont, West Virginia, and the District of Columbia, do not permit as is sales for most or all used motor vehicles. Implied warranties exist under all state laws and come with almost every purchase from a used car dealer unless the dealer tells you in writing that implied warranties do not apply. Usually, dealers use the words as is or with all faults to disclaim implied warranties. Most states require the use of specific words. The warranty of merchantability is the most common type of implied warranty. This means that the seller promises that the product will do what it is supposed to do. Another type of implied warranty is the warranty of fitness for a particular purpose. This applies when you buy a vehicle on the dealer's advice that it is suitable for a particular use. For example, a dealer who suggests that you buy a specific vehicle for hauling a trailer warrants, in effect, that the vehicle will be suitable for hauling a trailer. If you buy a vehicle with a written warranty but problems arise that the warranty does not cover, you may still be protected by implied warranties. Any limitation on the duration of implied warranties must appear on the written warranty. 
In those states that do not permit as is sales by dealers or if the dealer offers a vehicle with only implied warranties, a disclosure entitled Implied Warranties Only will be printed on the buyer's guide in place of the as is disclosure. The box next to this disclosure would be checked if the dealer chooses to sell the car with implied warranties and no written warranty. When dealers offer a written warranty on a used vehicle, they must fill in the warranty portion of the buyer's guide. Because the terms and conditions of written warranties can vary widely, you may find it useful to compare warranty terms on cars or negotiate warranty coverage. Dealers may offer a full or limited warranty on all OR some of the systems or components of the vehicle. A full warranty provides the following terms and conditions. Warranty service will be provided to anyone who owns the vehicle during the warranty period when a problem is reported. Warranty service will be provided free of charge including such costs as returning the vehicle or removing and reinstalling a system covered by the warranty, when necessary. At your choice, the dealer will provide either a replacement or a full refund if the dealer is unable, after a reasonable number of tries, to repair the vehicle or a system covered by the warranty. Warranty service is provided without requiring you to perform any reasonable duty as a precondition for receiving service except notifying the dealer that service is needed. No limit is placed on the duration of implied warranties. If any one of the above statements does not apply, then the warranty is limited. A full or limited warranty need not cover the entire vehicle. The dealer may specify only certain systems for coverage under a warranty. Most used car warranties are limited which usually means you will have to pay some of the repair costs. By giving a limited warranty, the dealer is telling you that there are some costs or responsibilities that the dealer will not assume for systems covered by the warranty. If the dealer offers a full or limited warranty, he must provide the following information in the warranty section of the buyer's guide. The percentage of the repair cost that the dealer will pay. For example, the dealer will pay 100% of the labor and 100% of the parts. The specific parts and systems such as the frame, body, or brake system that are covered by the warranty. The back of the buyer's guide contains a list of descriptive names for the major systems of an automobile where problems may occur. The duration of the warranty for each covered system. For example, 30 days or 1000 miles, whichever occurs first and whether a deductible applies. Under another federal law, the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, you have a right to see a copy of the dealer's warranty before a purchase. Examine the warranty carefully before you buy to see what is covered and what is not. It contains more detailed information than the buyer's guide such as a step-by-step -step explanation of how to obtain repairs if a covered system or component malfunctions. Also check who is legally responsible for fulfilling the terms of the warranty. If a third party is responsible, the best way to avoid potential problems is to make sure that the third party is reputable and insured. You can do this by asking the company for the name of their insurer and then checking its performance record with your local Better Business Bureau. If the used vehicle is still covered by the manufacturer's original warranty, the dealer may include it in the Systems Covered Slash Duration section of the buyer's guide. This does not necessarily mean that the dealer offers a warranty in addition to the manufacturer's. In some cases, a manufacturer's original warranty can be transferred to a second owner only upon payment of a fee. If you have any questions, ask the dealer to let you examine any unexpired warranty on the vehicle. Warranties and service contracts may not be transferable or there may be limitations or costs for a transfer. Before you purchase the car, ask the seller to let you examine any warranty or service contract on the vehicle. Service Contract when you buy a car, you may be offered a service contract which you can buy for an extra cost. In deciding whether you want a service contract, consider whether the warranty that comes with your car already covers the same repairs that you would get under the service contract or whether the service contract protection begins after the warranty runs out. Does the service contract extend longer than the time you expect to own the car? If so, is the service contract transferable or is a shorter contract available? Whether the vehicle is likely to need repairs and their potential costs. The value of a service contract is determined by whether the cost of repairs is likely to be greater than the price you pay for the service contract protection. Whether the service contract covers all parts and systems of the car. 
check out all claims carefully. Claims that coverage is bumper to bumper may not be entirely accurate. Whether there is a deductible required and, if so, consider the amount and terms of the deductible. Whether the contract covers incidental expenses such as towing and the costs of a rental car while your car is being serviced. Whether repairs and routine maintenance such as oil changes, can be performed at locations other than the dealership from which you purchased the contract. Whether there is a cancellation and refund policy for the service contract and what the costs are if you cancel. Whether the dealer or company offering the service contract is reputable. Read the contract carefully to determine who is legally responsible for fulfilling the terms of the contract. Some dealers sell service contracts that are backed by a third party. If a third party is responsible, you may wish to ask if the company is insured and to check the company's performance with your local Better Business Bureau. If a service contract is offered, the dealer must mark the box provided on the buyer's guide except in those states that regulate service contracts under their insurance laws. If the buyer's guide does not include a reference to a service contract and you are interested, ask the salesperson whether one is available. When you purchase a service contract from the dealer within 90 days of buying the vehicle, federal law prohibits the dealer from disclaiming implied warranties on the systems covered in that service contract. For example, if you buy a car as is, the car normally will not be covered by implied warranties but if you buy a service contract covering the engine, you automatically get implied warranties on the engine, which may give you protection beyond the scope of the service contract. Make sure you receive a written confirmation that your service contract is in effect. In the final analysis, service contracts over and above the implied warranty are usually a waste of money. Selling a used car First off, set the right price by going to books which list the values like n.a.d.a slash National Auto Dealers Association. Official Used Car Guide, NADA.com, 800-544-6232, Edmunds.com and KBB.com which are based upon reports of actual transactions by dealers and auction houses throughout each area for which a guide is published. You will find a few of these books at the library at the number 629 section. Make the car look great. Either hire someone like a detailer or go to the auto shop and buy a bunch of cleaning stuff. Outer look is everything. Use a toothbrush if you have to. Clean the engine with stuff from the auto store. Take out all your personal stuff. Make it look showroom neutral. Fix the car mechanically so that it runs smoothly. Have your paperwork ready including receipts of all repair bills. Advertise in the classifieds and slash or put a sign on it and park in a high visibility spot but get permission first. Don't drop too low in price. If you're a girl, don't show it alone at night. If the person wants to go on a test drive, don't let them go alone unless they leave their car there or go with them. If it's a male and you're a female, bring somebody along for the test drive. You simply can't take a chance with your life with all the wackos out there. If they take the car out to a mechanic, they will often come back and tell you how bad it is and want you to drop the price significantly. Don't fall too much for it. In many states, if you sell a car and the other person doesn't transfer the title, if he gets into an accident, you could be held liable because the car is still in your name. Protect yourself by going to the DMV with the buyer and transferring title. Place an ad in your local newspaper for no more than $300 over your rock-bottom price. When people call, simply offer one-time viewing weekly like Saturday afternoon, 1 o'clock for whoever shows up. Make a deal. Accept cash only for full price or the down payment for the financing deal with instructions that whoever he gets the loan from is to be used specifically to pay off your loan then he will get the car. Certified checks can be forged. Don't accept them. Transfer the car. Cancel your insurance. 